Hello everyone, my name is Takayashi Mura. I'm an endoscopist at the Department of Gastroenterology, now at the University Hospital from Japan. And I'm a corresponding author of the following our study. First of all, I'd like to thank the editor and the editorial office of GIE for accepting to publish the results of our clinical trial in the future issue of GIE. Today, on behalf of my co-authors, I'd like to introduce our study entitled A Multi Center Single Blind Randomized Control Trial of Endoscopic Clipping Closure for Preventing Coagulation Syndrome After Colorectal Endoscopic Submucosal Dissection. As you know, post the coagulation syndrome pegs and the delayed perforation were occasionally occurred critical complications after colorectal ESD. The PEX reveals localized abdominal pain, inflammation, and fever without perforation after ESD. However, epidemiology of PEX remains unknown because the presence and severity of PEX uh, cannot be exactly assessed in the retrospective nature. In addition, exact difference between PEX and delayed perforation also remains unclear because few studies have routinely performed CT scan for all cases after colorectal ESD. We thus conducted the current RCT, which was named CLIPEC study, that is the first RCT to assess the usefulness of endoscopic clipping closure for preventing PEX and delayed perforation after ESD. In the current RCT, PEX was defined as localized abdominal pain based on visual analog scale, fever, and like cytosis without extraluminal air after ESD. Delayed perforation was defined as PEX accompanied with extraluminal air after ESD. Unfortunately, the current RCT was terminated in the interim analysis because conditional power in the interim analysis was much lower than pre-planned futility limit. So the CLIPEC study clearly demonstrated that endoscopic clipping closure did not reduce the incidence of PEX and delayed perforation after colorectal ESD. From these results, we can speculate that PEX is not related to an additional damage after ESD, such as following bacterial infection, fecal exposure. Presumably, PEX will be due to serosal thermal damage during ESD, so the incidence of PEX might be already determined during ESD. In order to reduce the thermal damage during ESD, we recently started a new clinical trial using a novel electrocoagulation system, which is named NUPEC trial. We hope we'll be able to report those results in the future. Anyway, the current RCT additionally provided new other knowledge after colorectal ESD. First, simple periluminal air without PEX was observed in 13% after colorectal ESD in our clinical trial. Second, periluminal air with abdominal pain and inflammatory response should be also categorized into PEX, not into delayed population, because all these cases could be conservatively managed uh, in our clinical trial, similarly to regular PEX. From this result, we propose a new category of PEX comprising two types of PEX. Type 1 PEX is conventional PEX without extraluminal air, and the type 2 PEX is a PEX with extraluminal air after ESD. So, correspondingly, intraabdominal free air with PEX should be categorized into real delayed perforation. Third, large size region and pretruded type region and right side colon were risk factors for the incidence of PEX. And finally, the current RCT also demonstrated the safety of colorectal ESD in the clinical practice, 
because no cases received emergency surgery due to adverse events in our trial. You can see detailed results of this study in the GIE, and we hope you share this article with other colleagues, and also we are always open for discussion about this study. Thank you for your attention.